what's going on everyone train freak here and today we are going to ride the cumbres and toltec scenic railroad we are in chama new mexico we will break for lunch at osier colorado and then we will end our ride in antonito colorado they have many different ways that you could ride this train but for us we're going to ride the full length i think it's 64 miles and we will cross the new mexico and colorado state line 11 times here with me i've got train freak jr miss freak and of course myself so we're going to go ahead get checked in and who knows what all type of footage i will have for you today so stay tuned all right so our steam locomotive's coming and looks like they're going to hook up to our passenger train here so we're going to see him back in and make the connection And while we're waiting, check out some of this old rolling stock. So for those who don't know, this is the Cumbres and Toltec. This is part of the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad scenic line. So that's why you can see D and RGW on these rolling stocks. Um, it is narrow gauge. I don't remember what the width of the tracks is on narrow gauge off the top of my head. But uh, I will put an overlay to tell you. But narrow gauge was designed for sharper bends in the track or a sharper radius. So here comes our locomotive number 484. And once it gets close to us, I'll be able to see what type of classification. I want to say these are Mikados, but I could be wrong. Check out this reefer. I think ALA stands for Alamosa. I could be wrong. But August of 55. And that's what the inside looks like. Built car is almost a hundred years old but that they got more rolling stock down here that you could look at they do have some railroad personnel so I really don't want to impede but I thought it'd be pretty cool to see some actual old rolling stock up in person so while we wait to board our train we will be in car B there's the uh, open gondola car and that's car C, and the cars are backwards. We got a concession car here, which is car D, and they got four cars in front of that, which is all coaches. But we will be riding in Deluxe, which would be that car right over there, so. And looks like he's fixing to pull forward just a little bit. Or two blasts of the whistle but he hasn't moved yet so we'll see if he really does oh there he goes and he's just going to pull up enough so that way we can start loading now that's a little modern generator a little too modern but you know 
to make these cars worth it, they have to do what they have to do. So we'll be riding in the Chama car. That is beautiful. And then the New Mexico, only adults get to ride in this car. So you can see the rear brakeman riding on the side. Chama car out. There you go. Check out that logo on the back. Okay. There you go. Let's get a better look at this logo here. That is really, really cool. Denver Rio Grande Western, the San Juan. All right. All right, so now we're loading up. Car B, number 511. This is the Chama. Let's see what it looks like going in. And this is the Deluxe. And here's our seats. So we got 9, 10, 11, and 12. So here we go. We're gonna sit down and enjoy it. Yeah, it was too long. That's good. Yeah, I think we're fixing it. Yep, we're moving forward. All right, so we're leaving Chama on our way to Intonito. Intonito! Speeder. He will be following us. Is that with every state train? Uh, for this route. Maintenance away stuff. Check out these tank cars. 40 footers. Gonna go over the Rio Chama. That's where we're staying. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a 
good view of the river though, right there. there. Look at that. There's our camper. And there's our camper, that Sprinter. That's ours. All right, so what we're gonna do is wait until they check our tickets and then we'll go out to the gondola car. All right, so now we're out on the gondola car. We just left Chama. Out here, you definitely wanna have sunglasses on or some type of protective eyewear due to the cinders. We're starting to climb. I mean, it's just yeah, smoke going everywhere. We got a guy coming on deck to probably tell us some cool stuff. There are three stretches of straight railroad on the route, and we're on the second longest right now. A little bit boring, but uh, there's not too many stretches of straight railroad. If you look off to the left, you'll see Chama Peak. That's actually a false peak because the higher peak is behind it. That's the top of that peak, the continental divide goes right over that peak. Oh wow, well, there you go. We're about about a, a mile and a half outside of Chama. We start our four percent grade up to the top up to the top of Cumbers Pass. A four percent grade is very, very steep for a railroad. Typically one to two between one and two percent is the ideal grade for a railroad. There's a, there is a little car behind us. That's our fire protection. It has a tank of water. And they follow every train every day just to snuff out any possible fire spark that might spark that may come from the wheels or soot that comes from the engine. So that little vehicle, and you'll see it at different times, you'll see it. That's our fire protection. Yeah, this is shooting way up out. We're starting through uh, what we call the narrows. It's a, a V-shaped valley that the uh, Tama River runs through. This thing is long. And it's V-shaped because, well, let me see back up. There's two canyons that, that flow together, the Wolf Creek Canyon and the Chama River Canyon. And those canyons were formed by glaciers, and so they're U-shaped. The glacier dug those canyons out so they're, they're U-shaped. But when they came together, when the Wolf Creek flew in, flowed into the Chama River, those glaciers hit each other 
and stopped. So the Chama River continued on to Chama, and uh, we have a V-shaped canyon rather than a U-shaped canyon. So this canyon that we're going through is very uh, narrow and it's V-shaped. We've got a highway, we've got a railroad, we've got a river running through this, this canyon. What we call the narrow is about one and a half miles long. As we head up to uh, Cumbers Pass, it's a four percent, it's an average four percent grade, as I mentioned. And you'll hear the engine chug, 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 chug. It really works hard to get us to the top of the pass. We just have one engine pulling us. If we had several cars. We would have two engines. And back in the freight days, they would typically have two engines to take the cars to the top of Cumbers Pass. In fact, the trains would, were so long that they would take two engines to take some of the cars to the top of Cumbers Pass. They'd come back down and get a bunch of more cars, come back down and get a bunch of more cars. And once they were, all the cars were up there, they'd reassemble the train and head down into the town. It was first built, started in Durant, in Denver, and came south. So it reached Chava on December 31st, 1880. Uh, I don't know if that's the original. They, so a lot of the, the river crossings and canyon crossings were built with wooden trestles, and then they re later replaced them with steel.
our car is. Way over there. Ready? Coming behind us. Make sure that we don't start a fire on the tracks. That would not be good. Alright, so I'm looking for an albino black sheep. Anybody see here? Let me know. Fixing that do a great crossing. Thank you, Brad. We uh we are going right now about nine miles per hour. Typically, you know, the train goes uh we're going up here so we're going up slow. Yeah, but uh we're about ten to twelve. Sign with the X? Yeah. That means gray cross. That's typical of the road. I don't know what that means. You got a guy who's stopping the traffic too. So this would be what you call your uh, signal man. Notice how round is this, this is Wolf Creek Valley. Notice how round it is. This is uh, made by the some snow on some of the peaks. All right, so this is gonna be kind of hard to see as we're going over the road. Right up there is a highway. This highway goes up there. Right above it is a little cut, and that's where we're gonna be at here in just a second. So if it's gonna make a humongous loop, you can kind of see it back that way as well. So we're going to be making some really, really big switchbacks here. Really, really big switchbacks. We're almost to the peak. And due to low battery, I'm not going to be able to film everything. I do got one spare, but we haven't even made a halfway on the trip yet. Like I said, 64 miles, I'm not going to be able to film all of it. But I'll try to film some of the cool stuff that I can get. But I will tell you, so far what I have seen is stunning. Highway there, way up above, it's going to be us, the railway. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it, but there's the grade crossing that we just went over. And now we're in the trees again. But we're starting that rise that I was mentioning about. That tree had some carvings on it. But we're still going to go up, up that way. Alright, now we're up above the highway. Got a highway switch back right down there. The railroad is back further beyond it. That's where we were. We are way up. I mean, 
this is up. Look here. We are on a cliff side walk. Try not to get the sun in your eyes, but you can see the railroad there is a little bitty building with the telegram shack. We did pass some of those. I did, I did see on their website that the highest point of elevation that the railroad is is 10,015 feet of elevation. And that is snow, that white stuff. That's all snow. And it is June the 20th. Spring is almost over, summer's almost here, and we still got snow. Lots of it. There you go. There's snow all up there. All right, we are officially at Cumbers Pass. Elevation 10,015. It looks like we are coming to a stop. All right, so they just refilled the water. Where else are you going? There's our Cumbers Pass sign. We'll be good. And I think most of the way we'll be going both up and down here. Oh, fine. So we'll be, we're going up there. Actually, it'll be it's not, it's really I think we have five days of competition. tighter than 20 feet or 20 degrees on the railroad so this curve that you ex will experience here is the t tightest curve that you'll ever see on the railroad they call it tanglefoot curve because as you see the bottom rail railroad track is quite close to the upper railroad track and once it gets its name tanglefoot because at one time a brakeman was Leaving the top rail, going down to the bottom rail to watch the train as it go by and it goes by and inspects the train the brakes. He got his foot tangled up in the vegetation. Almost got ran over by the train. He survived. He survived. And the name Tanglefoot survived as well. So this is Tanglefoot Curve. Roll on to your hat.
such a neat view. fire spader coming behind us. Feels like the wind wants to rip my beard off. <laughs> that way. above the highway, now the highway's above us. You might be able to see a car go by. Just a vast open field. Review your valley. Be prepared for self-insurance. And because it's impossible to get insurance, you almost have to always self-finance. So we got a water tower coming up. I missed the last one. I'm going to try to get this one. So be prepared to self-insure and self-finance. Hey, see, the guy was saying all these cabins, people are off here. This is Los Pinos. We call this Los Pinos. named after the valley and the river that goes through it. There used to be a section house here. You can see the river. All right. 137 feet below us.
Y'all, I apologize for the shaky camera, but this is a shaky car. Check out that canyon. limit so I'm using a different camera I don't want to zoom in but we got some wildlife yeah that was that was elk. So they said it is common for you to see some wildlife up here on the train. We are getting very close to our stop. That shows you how shaky this car is. our fire speeder. All right, so while we were eating lunch, they uh, disconnected our locomotive, I guess to go get some more water and or coal. 
So now they're bringing it back. And we're gonna watch it couple up. Conductors riding on the back of the tender giving him signals. Okay. Yes, sir. Like right now, guys. And that's how you come. Okay, so one thing I was told is here they swap the locomotives so this was the locomotive that was on our first train so now it's pulling in the second train So we've finally been able to get out and we're going through a cut. So this is where they cut the rock to build the track through. Y'all can see them two vehicles down there or not. Down there by the river. But I will tell you, it's a drop. So, they said this section here is supposed to be more scenic than the previous. And I'll tell you, the wind has really kicked up. So we changed from locomotive number 484 to 463, which I think this is a consolidation or a 280. Such a party pooper. All 
All right, so I'm going to try to conserve some battery so that way I can get as much of this as possible, including the end. But that looks like a switchback to four wheeler trails or bike trails or something. So we'll be in and out for the rest of the journey. All right, some more beautiful landscape. Check out all this rocky gorge. video does not do what my eyes see as justice. But holy moly. I can see track way over there. So I have a feeling we will go through that and be over on that side here shortly. This is gorgeous. Now they did say we're supposed to go through two tunnels as well. Now how long those tunnels are, I have no clue. It's gonna get dark <laughs> when we do hit them. Because uh, unlike tunnels that you drive your car through, uh, they don't like railroad tunnels. So, yeah, this will be interesting. Oh, my God. Wow. Woo. Yo, that is a drop. said we were going into a tunnel. Uh, 
So the engineer just gave us a friendly wave. So this is Phantom Curve. That's a pretty this cool is ride. Right now. Back in 1948, a landslide came down just ahead of us here and knocked passenger cars down off the hill. They didn't topple over, they just kind of slid down right oh. out here. And the passengers had to climb back up to the we don't run in the winter, so we don't worry about that. So Freak Jr., what do you think about this train ride? This is amazing. It's such a good view. I just feel like I'm not scared of heights for once. Like, this is such a great thing. I took lots of great shots and pictures, and I think they were all satisfying. Awesome. How about you? Oh, that means we're coming to the tunnel, so you get to ponder on that question. No flashlight. No flashlight. We want to experience the dark. So I'm assuming this 10 means 10 miles per hour. another telegram shack.
are the two tunnels that we've been in. So, I mean, you got all the scenery is just astonishing. You definitely got to hang on. Look at the white water down in the canyon. Yeah, there's white water over there. All right, so what do you think of this trip so far? Beautiful, definitely. That's it, just beautiful. It's, I love it. It's relaxing. I would do it again. For do sure. I? I would do it again. That is if we lived in New Mexico, then we probably would. Worth the drive. I, I would definitely say so. Yeah. There is a mountain peak right in front of us and you can see all the way around that peak. We came from over there where that really, really high rock is sheared off. We were able to see this. I thought this was pretty cool. Just to let you know how high up, there's the peak right there, the top of the grassy area. I'd say we're about three quarters of the way up, maybe taller than that. slowing down there's the fire car coming up behind us oh you missed him he, he just time. yeah he just went over there I think we're coming to a really tight curve maybe and it probably has to do with these this cut here. So that way the cars don't rock and hit it maybe. It's the only thing I can think of. Cabin way down there. That's a beautiful ca cabin, too. When I say we're up high, 
for a oh there's another pattern. y'all can see the river. That's like a change of scenery. So he says we're supposed to be seeing a section house up here in just a second, right here. We'll stop here. Maybe going a GE again, 44 the, tonner? The joinery on the corners of the building. Okay. So what I've noticed on this side is like we've got a change of scenery. It's more green back that way. Now it's kind of more light green, like grassy. So, and then, of course, you can see some really, really tall peaks in the background. So. Alright, so we're seeing a whole bunch of cows out in the area. We're fixing to come to some there switchbacks. The there was right down there. That's where the bears were down there. Two of the big turns and the yeah, switchback. So keep your eyes out. So this gentleman beside me is saying that we saw, or he saw some bears earlier this morning. He rode up from this direction and drive back. But he said somewhere in the switchbacks that they saw several different bears. So who knows, maybe we'll get to see one. Maybe we don't. We'll just have to wait and see. But we are coming to the switchbacks. You can see the track curve over there. It looks like just like a big open valley. Switchback tracks down there. Beautiful valley over here. So that looks like that might be Antonito way off in the distance. The scenery, definitely a lot less trees. Um, seems a lot less rugged. But I will say this half has been a whole lot more scenic than, than the first one. And I was just told we had some elk
walking behind the trees we had some help but so far no no sighting of any bear probably long gone we're uh, approaching the bottom of the valley here we're almost to our destination you can see on you know about nine o'clock between nine and ten o'clock that's where we're heading in the distance you can see mount blanca which is one of colorado's 14ers they have about 50 odd number of uh, 14ers in colorado by my calculation that's about somewhere between eight and 10% of the world's 14ers here in Colorado. How many of you believe we're out of the mountains? Not me. Yeah. We're still in it. It does seem like it. However, once we get to Antonito, we will be at a higher altitude than we were in Chama. Yeah, the, the valley floor here is, is as high as it is in Chama. The San Luis Valley is a high mountain valley. It doesn't appear like we're in the, in the mountains just because the, the actual mountains are further away from us. We're surrounded by mountains. We got the Sangre de Cristos on the east side of the valley and we got the San Juans on the west side of the valley. We've been spending our time today in the San Juans. But the average uh, elevation in the San Luis Valley is set about 7,700 feet high. The main crops here in the valley are alfalfa, barley, and potatoes. Alright, so that mile marker we just passed, so that one's straight out there. See that's the plot of It's 800 feet, but it's one mile. <laughs> and that's because we got to make a loop. But this is also the same loop where they will turn the snow equipment around and the snow equipment will go down this track right here where this tanker is at rotary water car there you go and we'll ride that little track right there down to the other end of the balloon loop Even though it looks flat here, uh, we're actually in higher elevation than we were in Chama when we started. There's another good look of our locomotive and the lava water tank. Things are massive. So this is the lava loop. Here's a, another look at the water tower that we just went under. What's the rotary water pond for? In case they need water all the way? Yeah. Well, the, the rotary snowplow is also powered by steam. So the next stop will be Antonito. All right, we're coming into Antonito. We got a steam locomotive 495 sitting over there. Got another one of these water tires.
But I think our station is over there, so we might be going around a curve. Oh, that one's actually leaking water. Get a good shot of the engine house. Forty-foot tank car. Used it. Diesel locomotive, GD forty-four tonner. Flat car with a tender shell on it. Check these out. Three fifteens of consolidation. At one sixty-eight, a ten wheeler. Got our RPO, Baggage Express, some other cars here. Get some more stuff over here. Section man car. We'll be riding one of these buses on our way back to Chama because it is later in the day. And guys, that's it for the ride, so I will be back to give you my thoughts on it. Alright, so I know this video is very long, so I am going to do a voice overlay and just kind of tell you my thoughts while the train is going through the Chama Y to turn the whole train around. So my thoughts on the ride as a whole, um, breathtaking views. Um, I highly recommend it. Um, I know on the first end it seems a little pricey, but let me tell you, it is totally worth it. The lunch uh, was it was a buffet. It was very good. I had a little bit of everything, um, like you know, pure enchiladas. Um, I had pulled pork barbecue. I mean, you name it. Uh, the potatoes, rice, even a salad. They had some amazing cornbread and peach cobbler as a dessert is what I had. But their menu is also vegan for those that are like my wife who can't have any type of mammal products uh, due to alpha gal. Uh, one of the things I will say is if you plan on going out on the gondola car, make sure that you bring sunscreen. You know, it's one thing to have the sunglasses to protect your eyes from the cinders. Yeah, you want sunscreen out there too because, I mean, if you did the full ride like I did, that's 64 miles. And I probably did 60 of it out on that gondola. So that's just kind of my thoughts on the whole ride. 
as a whole. Uh, would I ever do it again? Absolutely. do not let kids in that part of the car and it's a it's like a bar so when you're sitting in your chair you're actually sitting facing out the window but it has that deck on the back as well so i'm going to go ahead and leave you all with this like i said i would go back and ride the train again especially if i get the chance to ride in the parlor car um, but as the train keeps going around the Y, I know part of this looks like it's very dark, and it is, and it's because of the angle of the sun. Um, however, I am in the middle of the Y right now, so the train will eventually make its way all the way around. And as it does, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and sign off and tell everyone thanks for watching. If you're interested in doing a scenic train ride, this one is a definitely high uh, recommendation. Um, I would not um, hesitate to try to uh, book this one or add this one to your bucket list. So other than that, y'all be safe out there. Have a great one and happy railroading.